Understat is one of the best sites when it comes to scraping data for football analytics. A lot of times you'll see understat data being brought up and it is a great way for us to practice web scraping as well as implementing this data into our data pipelines, into our data visualizations, into our analysis. And so the cool thing about it is there are two ways that we can go about getting this data. We can use a package called the understat API package, which allows us to use this Python package to just scrape the data, makes it very simple and straightforward. And the other option is to actually scrape that data ourselves. So we're gonna go over both of these two methods in this video, and I'll show you how you can use the API package, and then as well, how you can set up your own Python web scraper to extract the data from understat.com. This is the documentation for the understat API package, and it is actually a very straightforward package to use. The only problem with this package is that it is not really maintained. It hasn't been updated since I believe 2022 around there. But as you can see, if you go through and read the documentation, I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see it. The actual implementation is very simple. We just create this understat client, and then we can get any information on any league, any player, any team, and any match as well. So that just lines up basically with the understat pages. So if we go to understat.com, okay, and then if we look at the EPL, so see how it has league EPL. So that is how the understat API is essentially knowing how to extract the data. When we create a league client, okay, we are going to say, okay, now give me the EPL data and for a specific season. And that will allow us to extract the data. It's very simple to use and it speeds up our process a lot when we're extracting the data and the information. So to actually use this package, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we have it installed. So if you don't have it installed, you can do it inside of a Jupyter Notebook. So we're gonna be working with a Jupyter Notebook and you can install it inside of the Jupyter Notebook or you can install it inside of your terminal if you're working with a virtual environment. So to install it, We'll do it inside of the Jupyter Notebook. You put an exclamation mark and then you just say pip install understat API, okay? And then do dash dash quiet so it doesn't print out a bunch of different information. And then it will have the star for when it's running. So the next thing we want to do is we also need to run one more pip install. So you can actually just do it right here if you put a, con a space and then you say pandas. Okay, so we need pandas as well. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to import both of these packages. So we'll say import pandas as PD and then import understat API, okay? And then like the documentation said, we are going to create a client. So we'll just say client equals understat API dot understat client like that. And so what this is doing is this is creating an object, it's creating an instance of this understat API so that we can extract information from the page. So it knows exactly what format and what structure it needs to extract and return the page from. So if you run that, so now that we've created this client, let's first just show you how you can extract league information. So if we say league data, equals and then you just do client dot league okay and then the argument is going to be league equals and then you give it right here so if you don't know what league to give it so if you come back over here to this url and you just are giving it basically this endpoint right here so for the epl it's epl for la liga okay it's la underscore liga um, for Syria, A, same thing, Syria. A. Okay, so you can just copy this for Syria. A, come back here. And there's a couple of different things you can do with this, but we'll say dot get underscore match data. Okay, and then you just give it a season. So we'll say season equals 2024, like that. It'll run for a second, but basically this is going and extracting all of the match data for Syria uh, in 2024. So now if we look at league data zero, like that, so what this is doing is this is returning the information for a single match in that league's season. So this one is a match between Genoa and Inter. Two goals, home two, away two, expected goal values, okay? The date that it was played, 
And then these are some betting lines right here, okay? So win, draw, loss, like that. So now that we have that information, we can actually go ahead and we can extract even more information from, let's say we wanna get information from the match. So let's get information from the specific match. So say we wanna get information on all of the shots that happened during this match. So we can say shot data equals client.match, Okay, so instead of a client.league, we're getting a match data structure back this time. And we are just going to say match equals, and then if you want to, you can extract it with this league data zero ID, but basically you need this ID right here, okay? So you need this 27362. This is going to be unique for every match, okay? So this is just a unique identifier for the match if you're familiar with databases. If you aren't familiar with SQL and databases, then you can go ahead and check out my SQL and databases course for sports. This really helps apply SQL and database knowledge and topics to sports analytics. And it really helps with understanding topics like these, such as what is a unique key, what is a unique identifier for a match cake, because all of this is just essentially coming from a database. So to extract this match information, we need to get this ID. And so we can just plug it in. We'll just say 27362 like that. And then we can say dot get underscore shot underscore data, okay? And then if we do shot data, so now this gives us the shot data. So it returns a dictionary and it has two keys at the base level. It has a home key and then it has, if you scroll down at some point, you're going to hit the away key, okay? So each one of these is just a list of all of the shots for home and away. And we know what the home team is based off the match data up here. So if we say shot data and then we'll do H and then we'll do zero, so this is the first shot in the list. Now we can see what this information is. So now we have an ID again, but this is the ID of the shot, okay? And then it has the minute, it has the result, it has X and Y values, so you can start to plot different X and Y values. Notice how they are between zero and one. So you will need to scale that to any pitch size that is different than between zero and one. It gives you the expected goal value, the player. It tells you if it's home or away, the player ID as well. And then it gives you even more information like if it's open play, the shot type, right? Who assisted it? What was the last action? So this is really good information for us to have. We now have all of this good data for each individual shot. So some other cool things we can do with this understat API is we can also get all of the shots for a specific player. So let's say we wanna get all of the shots for Vitinha. And so to get all of Vitinha shots, we just use the understat API and we will just say player data equals client dot player, okay? And we'll say player equals and we need to use the player ID for this one. So 11380. And then we'll do dot get shot data like that. And then if we look at player data zero now, we can see that it's basically the exact same thing. So now we have one of his shots. It happened in 2023. Okay. So this is how we can get all the historical data for a player. We can filter this. So if we wanted to, we could put it into a data frame. So if we say df equals pd.data frame, okay, so this is just like a big Excel sheet. This is why we needed pandas. And then we'll say player data. And then we can do df.head like that. And so now we have basically a tabular format instead of this JSON um, dictionary data. We now have a tabular format of all of his shots. So now we have X and Y values for all of his shots and this is where we can start doing better data analysis using this pandas package. So that's how we can use the understat API to scrape all of the data that we are looking at. And it's very simple for getting information when we know exactly what we want or for automating long processes like getting a lot of player data or getting a lot of match data. So this is really good and this is really useful. I use it more than I use my just custom scraping methods when I'm using understat data 
because it is just easier to work with. When we're using our own method, which we'll go over here next, it's a little bit harder because we have to set everything up that basically this package is doing in the back end. The only problem, like I mentioned before, is this package has not been updated since about 2022. And so you kind of have to use it at your own risk of it breaking. Say Understat just changes how they structure their data or how they structure you know, their URLs, then this is probably going to break until the package creator updates it. And so that is why we can use our own code to scrape the data. So let's go ahead and we can check out how we can actually scrape our own data with our own code. So let's head back over to Understat and let's go check out the EPL, okay? And so today I'm recording this on a Sunday. It was just Manchester City against Arsenal. And so what we're going to be doing is we are going to be just scraping all of the shot data from this page, okay? So we wanna get all of the shots information. And so to do this, we're gonna to have to use a couple of techniques. And one of them is going to be regular expressions. And we're going to be using regular expressions to extract the data. So if you right click, we can actually see the raw data. So if you right click and then you click view page source, okay? And then I come up here, I click on line wrap just so it wraps the line so I don't have to scroll right infinitely. And then you scroll down a little bit and you come to this var shots data, okay? So it's a little confusing if you don't really understand exactly what you're looking at, but this is basically just JSON encoded data. Like if you kind of look through it, you can find like K okay, right foot right here. I think I saw like an actual player's name at one point when I was just glancing at it. But this is basically this data up here. It's basically just all of this JSON data, but it's encoded in a different way for the actual website and how, and how it renders on the web page. And so all we're going to do is we are going to request information from that page. We'll decode it and we'll get this exact same data for a match. So to do this, we'll start off and we'll import a couple of packages. We'll say import RE and we'll import requests. Okay. And then we'll import JSON. And we'll say from BS4, import beautiful soup. If you've never done any web scraping before, you're probably going to have to install the requests and the BS4 package. So you just do it like this. You do exclamation pip install requests and BS4 like that. And I mean, mine says it's already satisfied. But if you don't have those installed, it will run the install for you. So go ahead. I'm just going to exit out of this with the scissors. So we'll run that and we'll import those packages. I'm going to give myself a few more lines. And then to get the information from the page, we just say response equals request dot get. And then we will do this match right here. So we need this URL. It's match and then 266. Five, one. So that is what the Understat API, for example, is using to extract information from this page. So we'll go ahead, we'll copy all of that, and we'll paste it here. And then we'll just say print response.status code like that. And so you want to see a 200, that just means it was successful. And then to actually parse this, there's a ton of different ways you could do this. I'll just show you kind of my simple way for doing it. And we'll say soup equals beautiful soup and then response dot content. Okay. And then comma and then we do HTML dot parser. So beautiful soup is going to turn this into actual soup objects or these beautiful soup objects. And basically what that is doing is that is going to allow us to parse HTML and CSS a lot easier. But what we are going to do is something that probably a lot of people would say don't do this, but we're going to do it because it's going to make our life a little bit easier. We're going to say ugly soup equals string soup. Okay. So we're basically going to turn this whole beautiful soup into a string. And the reason why I'm doing this and not just using the actual text is because it turns everything in to a soup object. 
and we make sure that we keep the actual structure of the text with all the HTML and CSS tags, where sometimes if you're just doing response.content, it will remove the actual tags. You could necessarily, in this case, not do this. This is just what I've grown accustomed to, and it's just kind of more habit at this point. And so I create this ugly soup object, and then we're going to use regex, or these regular expressions, to extract the information. So we'll say shots data equals, and then we're going to say re.search, okay? And so here we're just going to use regular expressions, and we're just going to type out essentially the pattern of what we want to extract. So if you're familiar with regular expressions, what we're doing here is we are typing text patterns and how we want to find the data to extract. And then it groups, uh, and then it gives us groups of what the text pattern has matched. And it allows us to extract, we'll basically extract everything inside of this JSON.parse right here. So to do this, it's pretty simple. We just need to say var shots data, okay? And so the reason we do this is because it does start off with var shots data. And then we need to say dot star, okay? So dot star basically means in regular expressions, just give us any text. It doesn't matter what that text is. It can match literally anything. And then we'll say equals, okay? And then we'll say JSON dot parse, except for it's dot parse like that. And then we need to do a backslash and then a parenthesis with a single quote. And then we're going to do another parenthesis and we'll say dot star. And then outside of the single quote, you need to put another backslash and then we'll do the double quotes. Okay, make sure you have your double quotes and then just say ugly soup after this comma right here and then do dot group one. Okay. So that's a little bit of information, but basically all we've done is we've taken this information right here and we've turned it into this regular expression. So it's a little finicky. Um, it takes a little bit to kind of understand what we're actually doing with regular expressions. But if you run that and make sure you spell ugly soup, right? So S O U P. Okay. Okay. And so now we have shots data. So if you look at shots data, it's all of that text inside that json.parse. So now basically what we have done is we have collected all of that data, but it looks funky. So what we're going to do is we'll say data equals, okay, and we'll say shots data dot encode and then utf8 dot decode Unicode escape, okay? So now if we look at data, we now have this JSON object, basically we just need to JSON load it. So we'll say data equals JSON.loads of our data, okay? So now let's look at data again, and as you can see, we have data, and it is in that same format where it's the home and the away data essentially so that gives us all the shots for a single match and you can see that that was a lot more work to extract that data that is why the understat api is so useful but getting this data is through our own method allows us for more flexibility allows us to do a couple of more things and we can get more data if we wanted to from that single page so that is how we can scrape understat.com and this is just one of the many different sites that we can scrape. For example, if you want to scrape a site called FBRF, you can get even more data. So to be able to do that, go ahead and check out this video here, which will guide you through scraping FBRF.com.